Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll continue to look at BGP sessions and specifically how we can modify the TTL in a eBGP packet. So if you have a scenario such as this in this diagram where you have a BGP speaker and another BGP speaker separated by another IP hop, and you need to establish eBGP session between these two BGP speakers, by default, eBGP has a TTL of 1, so the BGP open message will be sent with a TTL of 1. Um, when you try to establish a you know, TCP session, TTL is going to be 1. Um, the problem with that is we have an additional hop, right? and this hop is going to decrement TTL. So that means that your TCP messages required to transition from idle to connect stage will not arrive at the second BGP speaker and vice versa. Now, in previous videos, I talked about you know TTLs in BGP. I also talked about BGP state machine. So if you've not looked at those videos, you might as well take a look at them. But in this video, we're going to configure VOS1 to establish a BGP session VOS3. And I'm going to show you how you can actually walk around this TTL limitation when you have uh, multiple hops between the BGP speakers. So in essence, we're going to be modifying the TTL in the eBGP packets sent from VOS 1 to 3 and vice versa. So now let's go into the command line, see how this is configured, and we're going to verify that our configuration works as expected using TCP dump. So on VOS 1, I'm going to go router BGP 1, and then I'm going to establish a BGP session with this router. So just to remember, to remind myself of the interface that I need to establish session to, I'm going to run the show IP interface brief. I'm going to grab this IP address and then I'm going to configure a neighbor to that IP address with a remote AS of 3. And then I'm going to do the same on VOS 3. This time I'm going to have an AS number of 3 and neighbor 10.1.2.1 remote AS of 1. So I'm just going to double check that I have the right um, number, IP address, I should say. So IP interface brief. Yes, that's correct. 10.1.2.1. So now we have a BGP session configured. So when I run show IP BGP summary, we should not have any session established. So this is expected, right? Um, it should be in an idle state um, because we cannot actually transition to the connect stage because we the packet never arrived at VOS3 because we're going to send packets for TTL of 1. Okay, and then on VOS3, we should see the same thing. We're unable to transition to connect stage in the um, BGP state machine. So in order to walk around this, in order to modify the TTL in the eBGP messages, what we're going to do is we're going to use a feature called eBGP multi-hop. So we're going to go neighbor 10.1.23.3 and then eBGP multi-hop. I want to set my TTL in this case to 10, right? You could use any value up to 255, but here I'm just going to use 10. And then I'll do the same on VES3. So I got neighbor 10.1.2.1 eBGP multi-hop of 10. So now we should be able to see our BGP session get established as we expect, right? So we're able to establish a BGP session because our TTL value, our IP TTL um, field has been modified from 1 to 10. Now let's see, let's capture some packets on VOS3, for example, just to verify. So we have bash tcp i um, from any interface, BGP, and then I'm going to do verbose. So we want to verify that our IPTTL is, has a value of 10 um, for, BG, for the BGP messages. So we have some IP packets, and I'm just going to stop there. You can see here I have here uh, the TTL and the IP packet is 10, and this is for messages sent from VOS3 to VOS1. So this is expected, right? But on the other hand, if you look at um, this second packet, this keep alive message, you will notice that the TTL is 9. And this is because the messages are sent from VOS1 to VOS3. And then we have VOS2 hop in the middle that decrements the TTL of 10. 
so the new value becomes 9 and that's the reason why VEOS3 sees a TTL value of 9 for this keep alive message sent from VEOS1. So we can see that our EBGP multi hop command works as expected and you know EBGP multi hop behind the scenes just modifies the IP TTL so that you can establish a TCP session um, and build your um, you know and establish your BGP session ultimately. Um, so that's it. That's how you modify TTL. Um, that's how the EBGP multi hop um, feature works. I hope this video was useful for you. I'd like to thank you for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.